Strawberry Frappuccinos and a Black Leather Jacket Chapter 15 A New Palette of Emotions Written and narrated by Eleanor Rose Artwork provided by Marlene Bruce Adrian sat on the side of the bed rubbing Chloe's back as she slept. It had taken a car ride and an extra hour to calm her down, but she still wouldn't say what it was that made her break down. It had been a couple of years since Adrian saw her cry, but it was never like that. Something was wrong, and for the first time since they started dating, it made him feel like she was hiding something big from him. Is everything okay? Adrian looked up at the sound of his best friend's voice. Nino had tiptoed into the bedroom with a bag of to-go food for him. I got your message. What happened? I'm still not quite sure, he whispered. I've never seen her like this. Is she okay? Did someone try to kidnap her again? No, I was with her almost the entire time. I think it was because of me. You? What did you do? Nino exclaimed. Shh! Adrian pressed his lips into a firm line and jutted his chin out at Chloe as a reminder that they needed to be quiet. Oh, sorry. I told her how I felt about her. What do you mean? I told her I loved her. Dude. I know. Dude! Shh. That's a pretty big step, isn't it? I thought we were ready for it. I hadn't actually been planning on saying it. I was waiting for the Jagged Stone concert. So what happened? I don't know, man. I gave her the necklace and she looked great and it just sort of tumbled out. Your first I love you just sort of tumbled out? Nino ran his hands through his hair and sighed. Adrian, dude, like, what even are you? I just couldn't hold it in. She's my entire world right now, and the feelings were just overflowing, so I barfed it out. You just barfed out the first I love you, Nino stated. Yeah, Adrian sighed. Vocal barf. So, what now? First... I'm going to eat whatever's in that bag. Deal. Then? No idea. Us millennials sure do have her act together, don't we? I just don't feel like I should leave her on her own, you know? I want to be here when she wakes up. Fair enough, but... Nino trailed off in thought. But Do you think she wants you here when she wakes up? Adrian sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I don't know. What do you think? Hey man, this is your relationship. It's up to you. <sighs> I'll... I'll leave her a note. And food. And I'll come as soon as she calls. Uh, don't start with me, please. Okay. Do you want to leave and go somewhere where we won't talk about it? Deal. What do you have in mind? Just follow me. Adrian stood up, scribbled a note to Chloe, and followed his best friend out the door. I hope you're ready to be my wingman. Nino said, pushing the elevator button. I'm always down for it. Alia? She's incredible. Like, dude, 
Remember that remix of Jagged Stone's ballad February 15th that I made? Yeah. What about it? She's heard it before. Like, legit, dude. She's heard some of my stuff and she's into it already. <laughs> wow, Dino, that's great. The elevator stopped and opened to the lobby and the duo walked outside. I know, right? I couldn't ask for anything more in a woman. Well... Adrian shot him a careful what you wish for look as he flagged down a taxi. Two things. First of all, taxis are expensive. Stop flaunting your money. Second of all, this woman is incredibly fascinating and I'm really worried about messing up with her. Does she know you're interested in her yet? Still working on that part. Well, that's the problem when you've only been crushing on a person for all of five hours, Adrian teased. So where are we going? Back to my place. Ah, yes, the turtle den. I'm sorry. Once you go in, you become a hermit, Adrian teased. Rude! Nino punched him in the arm. I'm having Nathaniel come over, too. Do you mind? Me? Oh, no, not at all, Adrian shrugged. I mean, he's a little strange, but I have my quirks, too. Besides, it's never a bad thing to have artists as friends. And now he lights up when he talks about a cartoon he likes? Ugh, my heart. We really need to watch Oran High School Host Club together with him. Yes, we do. Why haven't we done that yet? He would love Oran. Adrian shrugged as Nino pulled out the key to his flat and opened the door. It was messy as usual, but for the first time in their friendship, Nino started to clean. Dude, this really is a crush. Shut up and grab a broom, Adrian. They spent the next ten or so minutes cleaning the flat, throwing out monster cans and reorganizing the video game shelf. Nino was surprised to find his copy of Ultimate Mecha Strike 3 that he lost in high school. He chucked it at Adrian, who immediately put it in without needing any suggestion. You know, if we play this, we won't finish cleaning, Adrian said. Just one game, Nino said, sitting down on the couch and grabbing a controller. <laughs> your funeral. Adrian picked up another controller and pressed start when he heard a knock on the door. Oh, shoot! Nino exclaimed, jumping up to get the door. Hide the trash in my bedroom! Adrian rolled his eyes, but did as he was asked. He hadn't taken a look to see who it was, but it was either Alia or Nathaniel. He figured either of them wouldn't mind the still-scattered room so terribly. Oh, and Adrian's here too, Nino said from the entranceway. I'll be out in a minute, Adrian yelled from the back room. He stubbed his toe on the bedspread and let out a small curse as he stumbled back to the living room. In front of him stood Alia and Marinette, throwing Adrian a bit off guard. Oh, he said. You're not Nathaniel. Look at that. The pretty boy has a brain, too, Alia said, rolling her eyes. Alia? Marinette tugged at her sleeve. All right, all right. I'll play nice, Alia said. Come on in. We just need Nathaniel and we'll be all set, Nino said, clapping his hands together. So, what are we playing again? Marinette asked. Exploding kittens, Nino gestured to the table. It's actually a lot of fun. Exploding kittens? 
Alia raised an eyebrow as Marinette gasped. Is that the card game you were really excited about? Adrian asked. Don't knock it till you try it, Nino said. I'm not quite sure I like the idea, Marinette said. It's a card game about kittens and explosions and sometimes goats. You'll love it, Nino winked, walking over to the cupboard and pulling out a small red box. It'll take two minutes to learn, I promise. Oh, Nathaniel! Adrian said as the redhead walked into the already open doorway. Welcome in, man! Thanks, he said, taking off his shoes. Happy to be here. What are we playing today? Exploding kittens! Nino said, opening the box. Exploding kittens? Yeah, apparently it's a card game about kittens and explosions and sometimes goats. Alia added with a somewhat sarcastic tone. Ah. Oh. Nathaniel nodded. So, how do we play? The group sat down as he handed out kitten therapy and other diffuse cards to them. <laughs> what the? Alia said, looking at the card. What's wrong? Marinette asked. This is probably one of the most disturbing safer work images I've ever seen. Is, uh... Is that the back hair card? Nino asked, swallowing a laugh. Uh, yeah. She stuck her tongue out. Where did this game even come from? America. Oh. So, how do we play? Nathaniel asked, sitting down next to Marinette. Adrian zoned out while Nino was explaining the rules. Marinette was dressed in a black blazer and coral pink jeans, and her blush matched it perfectly. Julica would like her taste. It was classy and put together. Wow, Adrian, Keep staring and you'll make her blush, Alia teased, noticing his glances toward Marinette. What? No, I... <laughs> uh... Adrian blushed. Embarrassed that he was called out. I just really like those earrings. They're ladybugs, right? Oh, uh, yeah, uh. Marinette touched her earlobes. They're from the ladybug line, and I don't often take them off, so. I didn't realize Ladybug made jewelry. She doesn't make a ton. They're from when she was first putting items on market. Marinette quickly grabbed the hand Nino dealt her. What is kitten therapy? Oh, that's a diffuse card, Nino said. A diffuse card? In case you draw an exploding kitten. What happens if I draw one? It explodes. Unless I have a diffuse card? Precisely. Okay. Adrian watched as Nino began to explain the rules. Nathaniel sat next to Marinette and, surprisingly, placed his arm around her. Such a bold move was out of character, but she didn't seem to mind. His skin prickled and he glanced back at Nino, wondering if he noticed the bold move Nathaniel made. He pulled out his phone to text Nathaniel. Dude, you know that Nino asked her on a date, right? He saw him look down at his phone a few moments later, only to look back up at Adrian in confusion. Did he not tell you? Nate asked. We talked about it. It's all good. Adrian felt heat rise to his face as everyone looked at him in either curiosity or confusion. You know what, he said, standing up from the table. I'd better go. I don't want Chloe to wake up without me. 
That's probably for the best, Nino sighed, taking back the hand he dealt Adrian. I hope she feels better. What happened? Marinette chimed in. It's... Adrian started to say, then shook his head. We just hit a bump. It's nothing major. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so sorry, Alia said. It was borderline sarcastic, but he just shook it off. Well, I'd best be going. I'll see you all later then. Bye, Bye Adrian. Adrian, the girl said in unison. He gave them a small smile and walked out. There were a lot of undefiable emotions swirling inside of him that he couldn't describe. If anything, he was frustrated and a little bit scared. What happened to Chloe? What was happening to him? End of chapter. Keep listening for a sneak peek at next week's part. Chapter 16, Sneak Peek, 11th Hour, Chloe has a small monologue.